Many people think of boxing defense in binary terms. It's either hands up or hands down, right? Wrong! The long guard, one of the most suffocating, threatening, and downright annoying guards to face, and the subject of this video adds a powerful third option, hands out. You're watching boxing videos on YouTube, so you're probably aware of other, more advanced forms of defense, like the shoulder roll and cross-armed guard. But the long guard is unique, and to my eye there is a lacuna of long guard content, for boxing specific long guard content anyway. Sure, there are plenty of interesting videos for Muay Thai and MMA, but most introductions to the boxing long guard are either fragmentary or far too reductive. None present it as a system, a defensive matrix comprising dozens of fluid, interconnected, proactive defenses and disruptions. The long guard is so much more than posting, controlling the head, or holding the hand out. It is an elegant, energy efficient, and endlessly adaptable defense that deserves your attention and your respect. And if you spar or compete, it deserves a place in your arsenal too. But remember, this is only an introduction to the long guard defense. It is not a training guide. By discussing the long guard's strengths and weaknesses, and classifying its unique defensive tools here for easy reference, I am offering you a roadmap, something you can use to focus your film study, to better understand some of the drills we do, and to guide you as you explore these more advanced forms of defense with partners you trust. But this is only an introduction, and even then it is only about long guard defense. I am not going to discuss all of its totally unique offensive benefits. That will be a topic for a separate video. If that's something you want to see or you just want to help this channel out, please hit subscribe. It's the next video in my queue and it's going to drop when I hit 5,000 subscribers. So stay tuned. This is the basic long guard position. For easy reference, let's call it LG1. Notice that the lead hand is held almost at full extension, creating traffic in no man's land, the space between you and the opponent, or in some situations, even making contact with their head, shoulders, or hands. Meanwhile, the rear hand is held slightly forward, roughly where it would end up when catching the opponent's jab from a standard guard position. Both gloves are held open, with the palms facing forward, in what I will call a parry shape or parry position. From here, in LG1, each hand is passively blocking the path of the opponent's corresponding straight punch. So in an orthodox versus orthodox matchup, my left hand blocks and smothers the attack line, or lane, of the right cross, while my right hand, held slightly forward, blocks the path of the opponent's jab. As you can see, LG1 offers no easy routes to the head. Straight punches get caught in traffic, running right into the parry shapes you've prepared, where they can be blocked, deflected, and controlled. Hooks and overhands can be flipped or lifted away with the forearms and elbows, and uppercuts just won't reach you. Yes, the body is open, but it is difficult to reach at this range and dangerous to attempt, because changing levels and reaching in means putting your head very close to the defender's hands, making it much easier to hit you or just control the head and move away. And because the body is your only true opening in LG1, reading these risky attacks becomes much easier. In this way, LG1 works almost exactly opposite how the low guard or shoulder roll position would work, where the body is well defended and the head appears to be open to invite and counter attacks with reactive defense. Moving on, this is another essential long guard position that you will need to learn. Let's call it LG2, also known as the L guard, the bar, or the prevent defense according to Andre Ward. Now, if I want to rest in a round, that's when I go to my what we call my prevent. It is a natural counterpart and complement to LG1, as transitioning between the two is really as easy as bending the arm into an L shape, hence the L guard, and placing it across both straight punch lanes. So as you can probably tell, this position allows you to block two punch lanes using one arm. In an orthodox versus orthodox matchup, your hand covers the jab lane, and your elbow or forearm will block the cross. Lift and drop parries, which we will discuss later on, work especially well from here as you can lift punches away or drop down on them by moving the bar up and down. Unlike LG1, LG2 also works swimmingly on the inside, allowing you to trap both hands, make space for punches, and lift your opponent out of their fighting stance, all using that horizontal forearm. 
From here, you still have all of the traditional low guard or shoulder roll defenses with the added control and disruptive power of the forearm. Obviously, both the long guard and L guard are quite different from the standard closed guard position, and their defensive tools are also quite different, with a focus on proactive, long-range disruption instead of reactive blocks and slips. We'll cover these tools in detail later on, but first you need to know a bit more about what they all have in common. In other words, you need to learn the basics, the fundamentals. Only then will you be able to use the long guard safely and effectively. Here's what you need to know up front. First, unlike the closed guard, which covers most openings passively, long guard defenses are largely proactive. In other words, they're used before any attacks come your way to stop the opponent from punching altogether. While there are some passive defenses in place from the basic long guard position, there are many more openings, and as I like to say, the position will not save you. In order for the long guard to work, you need to be active and proactive with your defense working behind a screen of defensive traffic, hand traps, head control, off-balancing, hand and foot feints, and of course, punches. When these proactive defenses fail to disrupt or discourage the opponent, you can use the long guard's unique reactive defenses like lifts and elbow flips to stay safe. But they're relatively few. Most long guard defenses need to start much sooner. Of course, activity is important in all guards. Yes, even the closed guard, unless you're strictly looking to rest, but it is critical for a successful long guard defense. Don't forget. Second, as I've alluded to earlier, the majority of the long guard's defense occurs in the opponent's space. Reactive defense typically happens in your space, like when you block a punch a few inches from your head. In contrast, most of the long guard's proactive defense happens right near the opponent. This is the case with defensive traffic, which means extending the hands to block the opponent's punch lanes, blocking the space through which their attacks must travel, as well as trapping, which is placing the hands on the opponent's gloves to prevent them from punching, and off-balancing, which is pushing or pulling the opponent out of their fighting stance when they're ready to attack. Now this is really one of the long guard's great benefits because proactive defense is not dependent on amazing reactions and because defending in the opponent's space gives their punches way less travel time so they can't pick up the same kind of speed and power as they would otherwise. Reflexes are the first thing that goes, so what you want to do is lessen the amount of reflexes you rely on. These proactive defenses work seamlessly with the long guard's reactive tools, and in many cases they make them even better. For example, if we were to use defensive traffic, holding our hands out in parry shapes where our opponent wants to punch, it makes it very easy to parry, should the opponent choose to attack anyway. You're basically forcing them to either disengage and reset the exchange, or attack your prepared defense, either punching right into your parrying hands, or trying to loop shots around the lanes you've closed, which not only makes the shots easy to defend with elbow flips, but also forces them to travel much further, giving you way more time to read the punch and react with the appropriate defense. Finally, number three, successful long guard defense relies on active footwork and distance management, probably more so than any other guard because the basic long guard position has so many openings. If you do this stood still, the shot will come over or the shot will come underneath, but he's mixed that in. We've taken the distance away with the feet, which was very successful throughout the night as well. The good news is that the long guard is also one of the only guards that gives you tools for better movement and range control. More on that in a bit. The long guard comprises the following defensive systems. First, let's talk about defensive traffic. All punches are designed to travel down specific attack lines or lanes. That's what proper mechanics are all about, consistent delivery. So in theory, if I want to take my opponent's jab offline so he can't use it, all I have to do is extend a hand to block that lane. And that is what the term defensive traffic is all about. It is the practice of using your hands to close the opponent's punch lanes so that your parry shapes occupy or block the space through which the attacks must travel. Straight away, automatically, you think, I can't throw my right hand. 
straight away because you know the line of your right yeah. hand isn't there. This is a perfect example of the long guard's active and proactive defense because you extend your traffic before any punches are thrown proactively. Most of my defensive traffic looks like the parry shapes I described earlier, but you can also use your fists, elbow, forearm, anything you deliberately place between you and the opponent to obstruct their punches will work just fine. When used mindfully, defensive traffic can take specific punches offline, forcing your opponent to make a choice. They can disengage, or they may choose to punch through the traffic, but that makes it very easy for you to parry, block, and deflect their attack with small movements of the hand and forearm, all while your head and feet stay free to move. They might try to punch over, under, or around the traffic, accepting the limitation and trying to find openings where they can, but these attacks are easily defended with lifts and drops and elbow flips, which are readily available and designed to deal with exactly that. And if the long guarding defender is aware of their openings, they'll be watching for these attempts and ready to move. So landing shots this way isn't easy. I, I've made you throw that punch. Yeah. I know you're going to go to my body. Just by poison. If I stand like this, what are you yeah, going to yeah, do? Of course it's like, yeah, yeah. I've dictated to you what you throw. They may also advance, walking straight into your defensive traffic, which is either the best or worst decision they can make, depending on how skilled you are with this system. If they try to slip their way inside, they're vulnerable to head control, posture breaks, and forced carries. And if they try to walk you down with a high guard, they're vulnerable to hand traps, off balances, and controls. Engaging and beating you in the hand fight is probably the best option, but it requires that your opponent is the better hand fighter. And like I said, long guard isn't talked about enough in boxing, so the odds of you coming up against someone who knows how to do that, especially in the amateurs, are pretty slim. Beyond putting your opponent in a weird position and forcing them to make a difficult choice, you can use defensive traffic to do any of the following. 1. Blind the opponent, covering their eyes and any portholes they may leave in their guard. 2. Seamlessly transition to hand traps. After all, hand trapping is just defensive traffic taken to the end of the lane. I can extend my hand in parrying position and drive it right down the opponent's jab lane until I make contact with their glove, at which point the traffic has become a hand trap, and I've kept their punch offline all the while. 3. Seamlessly transition to any control, since your hands are already right there. If the opponent steps into your traffic or slips underneath, you can post or drop the hand and get heavy taking head control straight away. 4. Seamlessly transition to the clinch or a tie-up. When they walk into your extended hands, the job is already half done. Grab an underhook, collar tie or overhook, or get physical with a posture break and force them to carry you. 5. Move safely. For example, you might place defensive traffic in the opponent's jab lane before you step right, blocking the line of fire before you cross it. 6. Get off with quick, annoying punches. Way easier, because your hands are already halfway to the target or more. 7. Make reactive parries better and easier, because your hands are already covering the attack lanes and they're even in the proper parrying shapes. Alongside all of your standard parrying techniques, which are readily available whenever you're creating defensive traffic, the long guard offers a unique set of parrying tools, including deflections. Deflecting incoming fire with small glove and forearm movement is a hallmark of good long guard defense. The overwhelming majority of these deflections will be made using your defensive traffic, as the opponent tries to punch through or around the parry shapes you've placed in their way. Lift parries. Depending on the range and angle of the attack, you may be able to lift punches away with your glove, forearm, and elbow. It takes a bit of timing, but very little precision since this big sweeping motion covers the entire attack window. Look for these anytime your opponent tries to punch over top of your extended arm. Elbow flips count as lift parries and they are available off of any punch you throw, not only when your opponent tries to bowl overhands over your extended long guard. You often only need a small movement to lift their punch off course, but you can bait a more dramatic and disruptive lift parry using defensive traffic too. Just keep punch lanes closed for a few exchanges, frustrating the opponent and making them eager to punch. Then, when you're ready to defend with a lift, clear the traffic, drop your hands slightly, open the lane for a straight punch, inviting them in on your time. As soon as they commit, you commit with your lift. You deal with the punch and lift them out of their fighting stance, sometimes enough to stop their next punch too. After a lift, I love to follow up with body shots since I'm already underneath 
but don't feel like you have to. There are plenty of follow-up options from here. Drop parries. If the opponent tries to punch underneath your extended hands and attack your body, the drop parry is always available. I recommend changing levels with the opponent. This keeps you in position to resist an inside fight and see any follow-up punches, and it also means less work for your arm, as well as less of an opening if the opponent faints. For the purposes of this long guard discussion, the term trapping refers to the practice of pinning the opponent's gloves in place using the hands or forearm. When done properly, traps can take an opponent's hand, or hands, completely out of the equation, and they are extremely hard to punch out of. Even if the opponent pulls it off, they'll have given you plenty of notice of what's coming, and there probably won't be much left on the punch after all of that effort anyways. Trapping has lots of exciting implications for facilitating safe movement. For example, you can trap the right hand as you step left, closing the lane that you need to cross. It's also great for countering, as I discussed in my business hours video for short boxing. Of course, traps work seamlessly with control, tie-ups, and off-balances, as you can switch from one to the other at any time. Now, reaching out for a hand trap can feel a little scary for the uninitiated, but it is much less so for long guard veterans. Why? Because from the time your hands leave the guard position and begin to extend into no man's land, to the time they make contact with your opponent's glove, springing the hand trap, you create defensive traffic, obstructing their punch lane and vision, limiting their attack options, and putting all of your lift, drop, and deflection parries in play. Knowing how to use the palm heel or forearm to exert full body force against the opponent, pushing and pulling and off balancing, is one of the best ways to stay in control in boxing. Broadly referred to as control, this technique is constantly available from the long guard position, especially when the opponent tries to walk through your defensive traffic and collapse the pocket on you. When they walk into your long guard with their hands up, they're effectively putting their head, gloves, and shoulders into your hands, and all you have to do is get assertive. You can use control to do any of the following. 1. Blind or block line of sight either by covering the eyes or cranking the head and eyes off target. 2. Facilitate better movement to disengage, either by grabbing a handle, like a forearm or the back of the head, to pull yourself into pivots, or by pushing off for easy side steps. 3. Physically control the distance and stop advances by posting hard into the face, guard, or body of a hard-charging opponent. 4. Off balance or destabilize the opponent with pushes, pulls, and lifts whenever they're trying to get some offense going or get into their rhythm. And 5. Stuff or disrupt their punch mechanics, not just by shoving, but also by posting hard into the shoulder to stop rotation and by forcing the head off target anytime they're trying to line up a shot. Though neither strictly defensive nor unique to the long guard, feints play a big part in any proactive defensive system. They allow you to give attackers pause, cover your exits, and numb opponents to the startup movement you need to initiate punches or reach for traps and controls. Feints work great from long guard too. Your defensive traffic ends up doing double duty as a shield and an offensive threat, as your hands intrude on the opponent's space, forever in motion, occupying their eyes, feet, and hands. And with your hands held out, even low energy feints look big and scary. Small steps, shakes, shifts, and level changes create what looks like big movement as the whole long guard structure and frame of your arms and body moves and shakes, in contrast to the relatively small amount of movement you create from a more static closed guard position. Not only does the long guard system rely on good footwork to manage distance, minimize openings, and dictate when and where exchanges happen, but also, if you're going to hold the hands out, one or more of the following five defensive systems need to be active, and they all need to be armed and ready at all times. 1. Use defensive traffic to close lanes, blind, and set up easy parries, controls, traps, and tie-ups. This will constitute most of your long guard play. 2. Be ready to parry actively with deflections, lifts, and drops. Deflections in particular work seamlessly with defensive traffic and will constitute the majority of your active defenses. 3. Look for opportunities to trap the hands to take punches offline and frustrate opponents into biting on the openings you present. 
4. Look for opportunities to control the opponent. Post hard to stop advances, interrupt attacks, and manage distance. Break posture and get heavy to counter head movement. Grab handles for easy pivots and sidesteps that off-balance your opponent while you make your escape. And get hands on, posting on the shoulder, off-balancing, or cranking the head off target to stuff incoming punches. 5. Faint often to sow doubt and disguise the startup movements needed to punch, trap, and control as you work this defensive system. For more long guard details and development drills, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please take any questions down to the comment section. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe, study hard, and train smart.